and in that time, a space. In this eventual space so far out of nowhere exists something. Something that exists in all the living and does not disappear when life ends. That something is located on a distant place. It is located near you, next to you, within you. Follow me into the recesses of what exists on and in between the darkness and light in your mind, in your heart, and even in your eyes. Where some say the soul's window lies, drift with us where truth and illusion isn't far, caught in a deadlock, which will win. Welcome to Truth Talks and Theory. Please stand by. What is man? Is it the color of their hair, eyes, or body? Perhaps it is their size, weight, or birthplace. Or is it deeper? In their skull? No, in their hearts. Yes, the true face of man is inside his heart. The birthplace of angels and gardens, or raging dragons and grotesque demons. So the next time a person flashes, smile at you. Do not be caught by simple charm. For they might be gnashing teeth intent on capitalizing on their hunger. How does one tell? Confusing, yes. Yet, one can tell if they learn to ignore the vessel and dig deeper into the pool of being. The gaze of the wise dispels much mischief, while the staring of the fool overlooks many fires. Join us as we attempt to wisen the gaze so you do not fall trap of the mischievous. Welcome back to Truth Talks and Theory. Once again, you're joined by your host, Shwaib Muhammad Omar, and today we'll be discussing the vessel and the being. What do we recognize as ourselves? Most of the time, it is an answer we discuss as personality or what we occupy ourselves with, a difficult question that many simply choose to write a short answer to or skip entirely. This solution would be the same as shutting your eyes because you cannot identify what you see. So what is it that we see? A lot of who we are is what we view our appearance as, the shape of our bodies, the contours and blemishes or qualities of our faces. Let's reiterate. Have you ever looked at yourself closely, maybe for blemishes or curiosities? Maybe you are in the state of self-admiration or maybe you dislike your appearance. If you are pleased with yourself or not, your identity is rested upon the state of your physical selves and the weight that the appearance carries. It's the carriage yet given the title of driver. If we think to ourselves, who are we? We will not say that our appearance is who we are, but in the recesses of our minds, it is a nagging outlook we cling to. We are what is reflected in the mirror. But... We are here to investigate truth, not simply outlook. I'll give you a version of a metaphor. Three men had visited Switzerland, and they observed upon the hilltop a white horse. The first man said, look, all the horses in Switzerland are white. The second man corrected the first and said, that is incorrect. This actually means that some of the horses in Switzerland are white. The third man, who had a greater outlook, corrected the other two and said, nay, we should conclude that at this point in time, there is a horse in Switzerland that is white on one side. 
So what does this mean? Are we the face, the body, or something else entirely? I raise and urge you to consider yourself a being. The human can be deduced to an anatomy and figure. But the being of existence does not rest in our palms, but rather what is inside our palms. What we choose to pack and unpack. Where we are in our lives as a result of what we touch, taste, see, and ultimately keep. So perhaps our identity is that of keepers. Those that choose what to keep in our senses. But maybe our vessels are analogs. Can you hear the ticking? That is your heartbeat counting down, perhaps a single beat per a single second. Let's talk about time. How much time is the average human lifespan? On average, it is 72.6 years, which equates to 26,426 days. I have lived a total of 28 years of that 72, which is 44.6 years left in my life. Out of that 44.6 years, I have 16,279 days left. That rounds off to 10,000 days difference in my existence from the time I was born. If you keep that in mind, you can almost hear the clock wind down. So what do these days even mean? Let's slide back to the case for the existence of being. We exist and in our days and consequential years of existence, who do we become? I direct your thoughts towards how a fraction of the time of your existence is spent. Let us visit your past month, revisit the hours spent on a day-to-day basis and look from the angle of the men looking onto the horse in Switzerland. What choices dictated your color? What I want to get across here is the activity of the man is the majority of the man. The appearance of the man is a fraction of the man. Precious viewers, we're all given a home, a place to rest our thoughts and move about our conscious, a place safe that no other human being is allowed to enter. There's a lot of space and a lot to fill. So instead of putting much emphasis on the external appearance of our home, let us let in good thoughts, kindness, and piety as many vicious desires may sneak into the night when our better nature is sleeping. The lesson here is, our skin, our eyes, hair, feet, hands are the vessel, and we are the being, encompassed in the flesh. Who we are are the decisions and choices we choose to make, big and small. Let me end you off on this note. The decisions we choose to make, the more important, the more meaningful, the greater depth and quality we hold. So what are the greatest of questions? Who are we? Who made me? Is there a maker? And if you find the answer to that, which we have found a resounding yes here at Truth Theory Center, the only question left is, what does your maker want? That, my dear viewers, we hope to be a sign in the fork in the road of your journey to finding that beautiful truth. I'll leave you with a bit of poetry. I had walked by a mansion with all its grandeur. Surely, a prince must have lived therein. Once I had entered its mighty doors, much was filled with empty hallways, and all that aboded was a skeleton on a cobweb throne.